I'm gonna... This is a really nice paint job. What's more, it's also one of my favourite minis in the entire Infinity catalogue, and was the catalyst for me wanting a small Yu Ching force to paint, just as a palette cleanser. Corvus Belli, along with Angel Geraldez and Viejo, very kindly provide us with a convenient way to replicate their studio schemes in the guidebooks that come with the official faction paint sets. These guides, although nice and detailed and easy to follow, do sometimes have some little issues though. For example, there's no way these two pics are just one highlight apart. That's very clearly at least a couple of steps of build up to that bright creamy yellow. And that's fine for me because as an experienced painter, if you give me a set of paints used for a workup, I can probably reverse engineer the process. Add to this a little of my own style, which generally means a bit more texture mostly, and I can definitely turn this guide into something I'd be happy with for my own Yu Ching army. And so that's exactly what we'll be talking about today, whether my version of the studio colour scheme is worth the extra effort, and indeed what steps I take that differed to that studio colour scheme. But before we get into that meaty part, do me a solid and hit that like button for me. You can also subscribe to the channel, enable notifications, and if you really love the content and want to support me, you can do so through the Patreon link in the description, as well as my affiliate links that you'll also find down there. Business aside, you can already see that I've already reached this point of the model before even deciding to make this video, where I've painted in a mixture of orange brown and cavalry brown onto the leg, as described in the first step of the guide but I needed to finish off the rest of the model and then I had the bright idea to make a video. I often test the waters like this though, completely finishing a workup in one area and then starting to apply what I've learned from that to the rest of the model to finish it. I find that that really helps me optimize, especially if I'm working with instructions that aren't my own. When I was painting that test leg, I first followed the instructions immediately stepping up to a pure orange brown, but it became quite clear immediately, as you see here, that there was definitely an in-between step there too. So it's back to the wet palette and our initial mix of cavalry brown and orange brown, and we add another hit of orange brown to that first, before then stepping up to pure orange brown. At the end of these two steps, we're now up to the pure orange brown that we want to be at, and we're ready to start bringing in the scrofulous brown to reach the example image from step two. The book does advise here that the scrofulous brown is made in gentle additions to the orange brown mix, and I think this is probably where the guide becomes a little bit tricky to follow. With only the final completed set of initial highlights shown in the book, many painters might find they're unsure of just how many steps they should be going through of adding in little bits of scrofulous brown to the mix. And this can be a problem because add too little and your highlights are going to take forever. Add too much and they're going to look chunky in those transitions. For me it ended up taking two or three little additions but to achieve the texture I desired this might actually be more steps than you would need if you were say glazing or wet blending the work up. Technique is actually what's really going to dictate the steps here. So I fully understand why the guide is vague. I don't think they could have done a crystal clear version because it's all gonna be about how you choose to blend. And it was at this point where I kind of realized what the guide was getting at and really just stopped paying attention to it. Once the previous workup reaches the pure scrofulous brown color, instead of jumping straight to ice yellow, as the book says, it's actually the same again with gradual additions building up to a final edge highlight. And this is just how this workup works. It's just gradually adding color each time, stepping up, going to the next brighter color until eventually you get to the brightest point. And for that brightest point, I did also obey the book and finish off with just some pinpoint highlights of white. But under my bright studio lights, I didn't feel like these particularly popped against the ice yellow. And I don't think you'd be making a huge mistake if you decided to leave them off. So in the end, the process was much more drawn out than the guide perhaps implies. But the burning question really is whether or not it was worth it, and whether or not it's a good idea to spend this extra time. I already have a stock go-to yellow workup, which is quick and easy. I made a video on it using an old metal Battletech neck to show it off. But that workup was always missing that satisfying super saturation and really good contrast. And it was kind of difficult to work texture into it too. This one, I really like. And I think I'm pretty happy to spend the extra time to put my little Yu Ching force through this process. But that perhaps brings us to the biggest lesson of this entire video, the value of that work. How worthy is it? 
And truthfully, that's really going to be about you. I'm a pretty fast painter, and so for me, I could probably paint a model a day pretty happily, to the standard that I've painted this CN Warrior. That means if I really knuckled down and tried hard, I could probably get a playable list together within a couple of weeks, and for me, that is fine. But I paint Infinity. You might be painting more miniatures for the Force for whatever game you play. I think one of the coolest things about low model count games is that they pull us inward a little bit with our painting approach. They allow us to invest in each miniature as if it is an individual model and not a part of a squad that is a part of an army. In turn, this allows us to dedicate an amount of love and attention to each miniature that is commensurate with that. And it feels really great seeing miniatures come together in a force that are painted to that standard. But what about you? Would you see yourself using a process that has this many steps to it? I mean, all in all, we're probably using 12 to 15 different mixed colours for this one. Do you think it's worth putting in that extra effort when you're painting forces for low model count games? Or do you still treat them like armies where you just want to get them on the table? Let me know in the comments how you like to approach painting smaller forces and whether you think a workup like this is worth that extra effort. So until next time, friends, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. And bye-bye for now.